Uh, it's just me. I thought it would be fun to share some of the funnier stories I have from the operating room. Uh, that sounds kind of weird, but I have a hard time getting put under to go into surgery, and sometimes they try not to even bother using it. But I have a thing where I can kind of, I usually wake up, or I just somehow remember everything that happens and I tell the surgeon about it, and it usually freaks them out a little bit. Um, the first story I have will be from a cystic fibrosis related procedure. I had my med port changed about three years ago, I think now. Um, I'm currently on like my fourth or fifth med port. <sighs> you was out there who have one, you feel me, right? Um, I was uh, going in to get it changed, and it was like, pretty late. It was like an op a night thing. And it's an outpatient procedure, so I got to go home right after. There was no, like, in the hospital time for it. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, the surgeon was telling me that instead of putting me under, they were just going to keep me kind of subconscious, unconscious with pain meds. And that freaked me out. And I tried telling him, you know, I have a history of, you know, waking up and just remembering everything. And he basically rolled his eyes and said, not going to happen. Well, um, I was in, so I, you know, I reluctantly agreed to this because if not, it would have been like weeks before I could get it done and it's a whole mess. So I were in the room and they got the IV in my hand and I remember telling them that the pain meds burned going in my arm, but the IV was okay. It was just, it's something pain meds do. I don't get it. Um, and I remember feeling the first initial cut and my bed port, it was over here and now it's over here. Uh, I remember feeling the first like initial cut with the knife and I was telling him like, okay, well, we need to slow it down because I can feel this and it hurts. And he's like, okay, you know, we'll just give you some more pain meds and we'll wait a few minutes. And I don't know how much time passed, but I very vividly remember I started to cry. And I wasn't in pain, but I started bawling my eyes out. And the surgeon was like, and the nurse that were uh, standing right next to me, she was like monitoring my consciousness, I guess. She's like, are you like, what is happening? Are you okay? You know, what is going on? And I, I don't know what I was really thinking, but I just remember saying, Nick Jonas would be so disappointed in me right now. And that was it. I was crying because I felt like I was handling that situation so poorly. And Nick Jonas clearly would have done a better job. And that was it. I remember feeling, I re remember this so vividly. I was so embarrassed when I got home and I told my mom what had happened. Uh, and I did actually end up remembering that whole surgical procedure thing. You know, the doctor was like, no, it's not going to happen. Um, I don't remember this part. Uh, but when I had, everything was finished and I was like awake, they had me sign all the paperwork. And uh, my mom told me that I repeated pretty much every step of the process to the surgeon. And I, she said that she'd never seen him like a medical person so like unsettled. And he was pretty intimidated by that. So, one point for me. Yes. Um, I just think that's the funniest story. Because I am a... Story number two. It is the first Friday of June. And my family is all packed and getting ready to head to our camper over by Lake Michigan. And I'm getting my wisdom teeth taken out. Now, my family was all like, if you aren't comfortable, you can stay home or we can all stay home and we'll just go up north another weekend. And I was just like, no, this is going to be easy. Like, this should be the easiest thing I ever have done. And it was like the whole surgical part went super well. It was the after part. Um, I don't really remember much. Uh, in fact, I don't have a strong memory of anything that happened that morning until it was probably about 2 o'clock that afternoon and we were about two hours 
down the road. I do, however, remember my mom looking at me saying, okay, we're getting ready to leave. You need to get your clothes. I went to, the, to my clothing. I looked at all these clothes that I have and I looked at this one sweater and I was thinking, if we don't have that sweater, we are gonna be really cold. So I picked up the sweater and I took it with me. And that was it. I didn't bring any other clothes, just that one sweater. And of course, whatever I was wearing. And I didn't even realize I had done that until we'd gotten up north. And I was looking, I had my computer bag, uh, I had my clothes, I had all my medicine. And, and the, I didn't have my clothes, I had that one sweater. And I was just looking at it thinking, I am a moron. I remember I was like, why would you let me pack my own clothes? Mother, what were you thinking? Uh, anyway, I ended up going over and buying some last minute supplies, I guess. Uh, but it all worked out really well. It was camping anyway, like, you don't need great clothes for that. But anyway, those are my two funniest stories. And maybe you won't think they're funny, but for some reason I find them hilarious. I did kind of love them, and they were pretty funny in the moment. Let me just say that. Uh, yeah. So, if you have any funny surgical stories, or even just like random medical stories, please feel free to share them. Because, you know, a lot of people think that stuff is really bad, but it can also be really really funny or embarrassing even if you're still embarrassed you don't don't share don't share the embarrassment you don't have to put yourself through that anyway i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video and you think i'm kind of funny or maybe you just kind of like my channel uh, feel free to subscribe and all that fun jazz uh yeah so Adiós.